Hello everyone. Yeah, it's been a minute, hasn't it? So welcome. It's um, it's Daniel, as always, and I'm back. Uh, so first, why have I been missing? Well, as you know from the last video, I started um, Superior Term uh, not that long ago. Well, basically the week of the last video, and it's been tough. They don't call it Superior for nothing and it has been very challenging. There's been lots of new things that I've been learning. There's been a couple of reasons specifically why it's been challenging. One is new techniques. So some of the things that we've been learning, so for instance, we've been learning about making chocolate sculptures, been learning about making um, sugar sculptures, which is a whole different process and actually quite enjoyable. I, I quite enjoyed that, to be honest with you. But yes, you have to make the sugar and cook it, and then you have to cool it, and then pull, you have to do like this pulling thing, and then move it into shapes, so like roses, and leaves, and all these kind of amazing things that ultimately make it look fantastic, but it's not really edible. Chocolate, I mean, you could eat it, but we're talking in some cases about like a, an inch thick, of, of sugar stuff, which isn't, isn't really what you want to be chewing on. But anyway, the point of them is it's meant is meant to be like a, a spectacle, a centerpiece, all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I've been working on doing a bunch of those. For this video, I'm probably not going to show as many pictures and I will tell you why. Superior has been over sort of like two and a half, almost three months, as opposed to both basic and intermediate, which about a month, month and a half each. And Unfortunately, I don't know what it is. Well, I know what one of the things is, but unfortunately, my health hasn't been great. Like, there's nothing fundamentally wrong with me. Just I've been caught with bouts of sickness, just little things, little things here and there that have caused me like a, a day or two away from class. And so, for instance, I made both the sugar and the chocolate pieces ready to ready to go in the sculpture, but I wasn't there for the day of the assembly. So, and I forgot to take pictures on those little bits. So it's kind of like, well, I can't really show you anything, really. So in all honesty, Superior has been very much a, it's been less of a focus on, oh, look at the thing I'm making. Here it is on Instagram or on here or whatever. It's more just been about doing it. So that's one element in terms of learning new skills. The second element is more so in terms of the speed, the quantity, the amount of things that have been needed to be made within a relatively short period of time. So a, a couple of examples were a, um, a couple of sessions focused on making chocolates. So like various chocolate bonbons, like sphere things with different fillings or um, nougat or all sorts of different bits and bobs of like truffles. It's been about making a certain, a certain amount of them almost as fast as possible, really. So it's been really full on and really difficult to try and up that pace while still producing sort of like the high level quality products. The same goes for the afternoon tea section where we had to make uh, basically three sweet items, cakes, mousses, etc., And then a savory item, which in my case was a um, coronation tick chicken shoe bun, which turned, I mean, all of those turned out relatively good. I was pretty happy with them, but they were really, really challenging in terms of time to do. So basically the reason that I'm saying that is to, put, to set up my excuse for not making a video for a while, which is it's been so full on and there's been things to do outside of the lessons as well in terms of creating our portfolio, developing recipes for our final exam, etc., etc. It's just meant that the time to do these videos, have the effort to do them, to record them, set them up, and then edit them every week, which was my original plan. It's just not been, it's just not been possible, to be honest. And obviously, the priority is to focus on the course, not on making videos from the course. So I apologize that there's been no uploads, but it's been for the best, really. So what I wanted to do was two more things as a result of this video. One, tell you how I did, tell you if I graduated. I'll save that till the end. Keep, you know, keep, keep watch time, all that kind of good stuff. What I wanted to say was effectively just a bit of a summary of what the final exam was like and, and how I found it. The final exam for this term was different from the other ones. So in the other ones, we had four 
potential exam dishes that we had to learn and then we'll find out on the day of the exam which one we're making and then there's a written exam as well this time around still a written exam that's that's not really changed although questions obviously have changed but for the actual practical exam for a start it was double the length so previously we had about two and a bit hours this time we had five but what we needed to make was an entremet so a mousse cake so the there's sort of like a couple of key things that we needed to do so we needed to have a a, a cremeau in the middle we needed to have a crispy base we needed to have a sponge um, around the outside we needed to have chocolate decorations that we tempered and uh, we needed to have to glaze like a mirror glaze over the top that was one element the other one was two identical plated desserts they've been hammering it into us like it can't just be a cake on a plate it has to be something that can only be eaten from a plate so that adds a little bit of a level of complexity and we had two workshops that focused on plated desserts and experimenting with things which admittedly I came out of with no idea of what I was going to do all of mine were pretty poor and it was a pretty hard lesson to be honest with you especially the feedback and then we had an entremet workshop where we could also do a new version of a plated dessert and get feedback on both so at the end when it comes to the practical exam it's not just guesswork about whether we would pass we get feed not whether we would pass whether we meet the criteria so also another twist and challenging consideration to this is the fact that we only had a certain amount of ingredients so we had a list of about 35 ingredients in totality i think it was around about that we had to and some of them were random as hell like puff quinoa as a for instance i didn't even use it i didn't even know it was a thing i knew quinoa was a thing i never knew you could puff it so we had a certain number of all these different ingredients we had to use a minimum of 25 i think and then also alongside that you have a limited quantity of them so what you have to do is you have to develop the entremet and the two plated desserts within those boundaries so when it comes to things like whipping cream because you're making mousses ganaches whatever it was very close i think i had something stupid like five milliliters left across the two and you don't get any more if you mess up something in the exam unless you've got the ingredients left after obviously everything else in consideration you cannot remake anything it's really there's a lot more thought that goes into this final exam not only that we have to have written the recipes done costings and um, for the entremet anyway we have to have done assembly instructions diagrams and these form portfolios as well so it's a lot more full-on and a lot more work outside of school as well as in school so making these videos really wasn't the priority so how did it all go well the week well a week and a bit before the final practical exam and written exam i got covid yay so not only was i feeling like utter crap i could not go into school for obvious reasons i don't want to but one, it's their policy, and two, I wouldn't have done it anyway because I wouldn't wanted to uh, risk my classmates. I mean, there's a load of us there, five groups in total, and I didn't want to mess up their time. So I missed a whole bunch of lessons, but more critically, what it meant is I missed the mock exam, which was the week before the practical exam. So what that meant was, although I had, a, I had to develop a time plan for how I was going to do the entremet and the plated desserts within uh, the five hours of the exam I was unable to test that theory in the previous workshops we had a lot longer so I had to make a time plan that in theory should work but it was completely untested when I came into the practical exam one I wasn't a hundred percent recovered from COVID I wasn't I was still not not feeling my best but I had to crack on I just I just had to and two I had no idea if my time plan would work so that led to a very stressful day or session practical exam that I completed but there was lots of stuff that I wish I'd have been able to do more of or do better a couple of things went wrong basically I walked out of the exam thinking this did not go well I was genuinely concerned whether I was gonna pass or not I had to wait five days yeah five days before having the debrief where they give feedback on how the exam went practical exam only and telling me whether I passed the overall course or not so I had to get at least 50% of the marks for the practical exam and overall 
at least 50%. So now coming to the big part of this video, did I pass? Now, if you follow me on Instagram or any of my other social medias, you know the answer to this. This is not gonna be a surprise, but for those that don't, see that there? If it's gonna focus, that is my medal because I passed. I passed. I have no idea how. The feedback that I got on my practical exam was actually pretty good. I don't know how I managed that. Like there were things that could be better, of course. Against my expectations, against what I thought I did, I don't know how the chefs marked me higher <laughs> than I thought I was gonna. But yeah, I, I actually passed. I, I did it. It's been a few, well, it's been almost two weeks now since I've passed. Um, so yeah, but I actually, I did it. I got my, my patisserie, diplôme de patisserie from Le Cordon Bleu in London. It's, it's been insane. Um, I had graduation last week where I formally got my certificate. And if I remember, I put a picture up here. Um, so you'll see my three certificates across each, one per term. And then the big boy certificate, the um, whole diplôme de patisserie. But yeah, I, I did it. So I won't keep this video too much longer. I prefer to keep them as succinct as possible. But please bear in mind, I don't have a script or anything for this. This is just free form coming off the top of my head. A little bit of editing afterwards, of course. I just want to say, well, first and foremost, a huge thank you to everyone who has supported me throughout this whole thing so far. And um, especially my wife, my family, my classmates, of course, for supporting me quite physically there. Um, and, and emotionally, mentally, all that kind of good stuff. It's, I couldn't have done it without them. Yeah, it feels weird now that it's over. It's, it's a huge, I feel a huge sense of relief and achievement, even though these are just fundamental skills. This is just stuff that I've learned, but it's not, it doesn't mean I'm somehow this master baker, this amazing pastry chef or anything like that. It just means that I've learned a lot of stuff and done enough to got, get through. I am by no means an expert on any of these. There are some things that I do a bit better than others, some things that I do a bit better than classmates, but this is really only the start of this whole journey, I feel. There's lots for me for me to work on. There's lots for, more for me to sort of like get to grips with what I really like. I think I've got more of a sense now than I had going into the course, but ultimately I still don't know 100% where my place is in the pastry world, to be honest with you. I, I have theories about what I maybe do want to do, but maybe don't want to do but I'm not sure yet, I'm still working through that. Maybe the next week or so, I'll be in a bit more of a surefire position of what the next, say, six months of my life is gonna hold from a pastry perspective, from just generally a, a work perspective. I mean, I may or may not go into working pastry straight away. I think one thing that I found throughout this course is from a, I mean, I'm not the most fittest guy in the world, and that has made it really challenging to try and get through some of these things. There's been some sweaty days and I don't like that. And I worry that going into the industry, it's gonna make it more challenging. It's gonna be more full on. But these are things I need to consider what, what I want to do now. I'll wrap this video up here now by just saying once again, thank you to everyone who supported me. Thank you if you watched this video. Apologies, it's been, been a little while. I'm gonna, I'm not gonna promise, but I do want to be a bit more regular with these videos in terms of the what next, what things I've been baking. Maybe I'll start doing, you know, video recipes or a little shorts. I don't, I don't really know yet. I haven't figured that out. It's more my life and what I do next is a priority. What I do with this channel will come sort of next, but I'll, this won't be the last you've heard from me, that's for sure. Yeah, so once again, I've passed, got my certificates, that chapter is over, but really what I do next is only just beginning. So thank you once again for watching and I'll see you in the next video, whenever that may be. Hopefully it won't be a two month gap, maybe a couple of weeks. But yeah, thanks very much for watching. I'll see you next time. Peace.